Hello there. Brexit is also leaving its mark on non-governmental organizations in Great Britain. According to a report, many facilities have had to close or lay off employees because of a lack of money. According to this newspaper report, many British non-governmental organizations or NGOs got into financial difficulties after Brexit. Numerous facilities supported by the EU's European Social Fund have had to close or lay off staff because they did not receive timely or sufficient money from the British government. That is what The Guardian now wrote. The newspaper referred to an analysis of state funding with which London wants to replace EU aid. The British government had set up its own fund called the UK Shared Prosperity Fund or SPF. But the SPF was far too late for hundreds of organizations, as Matthew Brown of the Welsh umbrella organization Wales Council of Voluntary Action told the newspaper. According to the Welsh Minister for Economic Affairs, Vaughan Geething, uh, a total of uh, £772 million pounds less is available in the part of the country than would have flowed from the Social Fund and the European Regional Development Fund. The UK's approach to SPF is messy, Geething said. According to the regional government, Scotland has also significantly less money available. Scottish Labour Secretary Richard Lockhart put the loss at £337 million between 22 and 25. The British government rejected the figures. The four parts of the country would receive at least as much money as before. In addition, the regional governments are now free from the bureaucratic EU processes and have more say in the distribution. That's what the government emphasizes. Since Brexit, numerous sectors of the economy have complained about higher hurdles and costs when trading with the EU and when hiring foreign specialists. That's another downside here. In the British newspapers, you can read about countless sectors struggling with Brexit problems, from gastronomy to agriculture. With each passing month, the extent of the damage Brexit has done to the UK economy is becoming more apparent. During the pandemic, it was sometimes tricky to separate the consequences of COVID and those of Brexit, but now the picture is very clear and don't come with the Ukraine war. Two years after leaving the EU, a clear consensus has emerged among economists. That's what the Financial Times wrote at the end of November. Brexit has significantly worsened the country's economic performance. Households have become poorer, investments are stagnating, and trade barriers have become the largest sales market the EU and, and, and are hindering it, and have caused the movement of goods to collapse by an estimated 10 to 15%. The OBR estimates that the British economy will shrink by 4% overall as a result of Brexit. The depreciation of the currency contributes to this, among other things. The value of the pound has fallen about 10% since the EU referendum in June 2016. And this has made imports more expensive and fueled inflation. But wages have not increased as a result. The think tank Resolution Foundation estimates that Brexit has pushed wages down by almost 2% after adjusting for inflation. In other words, Brexit is contributing to the deep cost of living crisis. That's what the Brits are currently grappling with. Trade between the UK and the EU has also plummeted. Export companies like that of uh, cheesemaker Simon Sparrow, I mentioned in another video, now have to deal with additional costs and endless paperwork. This has led many to stop trading with EU countries altogether. In the summer, the think tank Centre for European Reform published a study that calculated that Britain's trade volume could be almost 14% higher if the country were still part of the EU. Farmers are also among the victims of Brexit. They've been complaining for a long time that they are short of workers from Southern and Eastern Europe due to the tightened immigration regulations. In late summer, the Farmers' Union NFU reported that £60 million worth of fruit and vegetables had to be disposed of because there were not enough workers to pick the crops. Restaurants and pubs are in a similar predicament. During the pandemic, thousands of cooks, waiters and baristas from EU countries went back home 
and stayed there due to the tightened border bureaucracy. This is an important reason why 11% of the positions in the catering industry are vacant. The, and this spoils the Christmas business for many companies as well. The elegant restaurant uh, The Rattle Owl in the northern English city of York, for example, could serve less than half of the guests on Christmas Day than in previous years. More is simply not possible due to the lack of staff. Celebrity chef uh, Jason Atherton recently said he will have to close some of his London restaurants entirely over the next year because a third of his staff are missing. The public has certainly noticed that Brexit is not going according to plan. A survey in November showed that 56% of Britons now consider it a mistake. And this is more than ever before. The country is suffering from a collective Brexit hangover. Even among those who voted to leave in 2016, a fifth have now become anti-Brexit. Nonetheless, there are no signs that the government under Rishi Sunak is planning a rapprochement with the EU in order to limit the damage caused by Brexit. Instead, the government is stubbornly clinging to the belief that Brexit could somehow turn out really great. When rumors circulated a few weeks ago that the government was trying to restart relations with the EU based on the Swiss model, Downing Street immediately denied it. Under no circumstances would that be done. An approach in which Great Britain would have to adopt regulations and standards from the EU is out of the question. I know that Brexit can bring enormous benefits to the country, said Sunak, without going into detail about what these benefits are. And of course they do. But the stubbornness is also due to the fact that it's considered good manners among the hardcore of the Tories and the right-wing conservative press to celebrate Brexit. Both groups are extremely influential. And so it's hardly to be expected that a Brexit reversal will come under Rishi Sunak, no matter how great the damage becomes. And of course they will not tell you what those benefits are. The right-wing press and, and those uh, hard Brexiteer uh, Tories, nobody of them can tell you any benefits of Brexit except some they're repeating the headlines from the Brexit campaign. Yeah, more money from the, for the NHS. Where are the 350 million a week for the NHS? They put in gigantic letters on their bus. Where is take back control of our borders? Now their problems are bigger than they have ever been with the EU. With the Dublin Accord, they could have sent back most of those crossing the channel. And uh, not to talk about some other unicorns. There are no Brexit benefits. These great new trade deals they could sign. Except two of them, they are all copy and paste deals with a few things that are worse than before from the times they when they had these deals with the EU. But the problem is we're talking about around about 70 deals here. They have now. When they were a member of the EU, they had almost 800 agreements with other countries and not 70. And every deal they made with a copy and paste is at maximum as good as it was before and that only for a transitional period because all those countries want to negotiate on them but with more time so that's why they initially did the copy and paste ones but in the end like we see it with japan for example when they are finally negotiated to the end they will be worse than what the uk had as a member of the eu and the two new ones australia and new zealand as much as i like australia and new zealand those trade deals are not good for a lot of people in the UK, especially not the farmers. So where are all these big achievements? There are some achievements. I mentioned that in many videos before for the friends of the Tories. You can make a lot of money with economy going down. You can make a lot of money with the currency going down. All their friends will have earned millions at least with that at the, in the city of London. Yeah, the city of London had some good things because uh, they could earn money on the cost of the normal population in Britain. And I'll see you in my next video. 
I'll be back.